Sweet, we're live on YouTube, so uh, you know the rules. Okay, um, so make sure you choose a color. Um, uh, do you want me to call you Psycho Mantis, or do you want me to call you Cam? Uh, how are you guys doing it? I'll just call you Cam, because I'll get cool. confused. Yeah. So choose a color, uh, that way you'll be able to interact with some of these things. Okay, are they all available? Uh, I think red and blue are taken, but you can choose any other color. Right. Yep, there you go. All right. And make sure you change your token color as well. Uh, yeah, you can right-click your token up here that's sitting on your card, and then uh, change the color tint by just clicking color tint and changing it to whatever you want, probably green. Mm. You see your token How up here? Let me zoom out. Oh, I'm yeah, like, you've never played, so I should probably cool. tell you. So yeah. Zooming in and out is done with your mouse wheel. Moving the board around is either done with WSAD, like any shooter game, or by holding down your middle mouse button and dragging. Um, Let me get my mouse real quick, because I'm on a laptop. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yep, that works. You could also just use WSAD. I'll change your token for you, though, in this case. Mm -hmm, let's see. Go. Okay. Okay, and you guys have already all chosen your starting gear and stuff the other day, so we're already set there. Uh, we're we're going to be able to basically just jump right into a, an event. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to give you guys the option of choosing which mission you do, because we're, we're basically testing today. We're not playing like a full-on RPG where I surprise you and, and you have no idea what's coming. Um, this is more for us to all test the game before it ships in a couple weeks. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to list... Cam just dropped. Oh, you dropped out of the game, Cam? Uh, no, it's, I'm still here from what I can see. Yeah, it disconnected you from the game. Unless it's busted on our end. Oh, I'm frozen, actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, no worries. This part I'm just going to read through, and you can uh, you can comment on it while you try to reconnect. Okay. Um, so here's the list of missions that we have available to us, and I'm not going to explain what they are. I'm just going to name them and just say whatever you think sounds the coolest out of all these. Okay. Okay. Confront the mesmer. Find the okay. dragon egg. Okay. Hunt a giant lizard. Okay. Raid a bandit camp. Okay. A lotus in the marsh. Okay. Save and Awakened. Uh, awakened is like Jedi, essentially, I guess, if you want to. It's magic users. Save and Awakened from the Spire. Um, protect the Caravan. And the Arena. Uh, the very first one, Confront the something. Confront the Mesmer. Yeah, that one sounds cool. Oh, no, we can't do that one. Sorry, that's a follow-up mission. I just read it <laughs> on it. My bad. Nice. <laughs> okay um save the awakened okay um let's see Ooh, that's fun luke what's your vote God, go away okay um save and awakened from the spire okay um yeah we could we could probably do that one i'm just reading through it real quick uh it looks pretty straightforward so yeah why not let's save and awaken from okay. the spire Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so we're going to start with a the story. Then I'm going to roll the environment dice, uh, where basically it, it helps kind of give us a randomized mission on our way to the main mission, or okay. just just screws us by getting getting a sandstorm or something like that to happen. All right. Um, a young girl sees your small band and approaches you. She explains that her older brother was taken to the south by some men against his will. While she doesn't have much to offer. Her brother was part of the Northern Alliance, and they would likely reward you for saving him. Uh, that's that's the description of the mission. Um, now, everything from here I'll actually narrate, and it won't be as lame. All right, let me start you guys. Up here at Dry Gulch. All right, that's where you guys are starting. Uh, so Dry Gulch is a small town of about uh, seven or eight hundred people which uh in in the land of ruin is not that small it's not like here um it's very hard to survive in any town so um uh, 800 people's not, not a bad sized town actually it's pretty pretty bumping 
and uh, you guys have already bought all your gear, so we're gonna assume you guys already went to the marketplace, and um, this young girl, basically, there's these there's these buildings in, in most towns, over a couple hundred people, um, bounty offices, and in those bounty offices, you go in and you take work, and now it's not always bounty-related work where you're going to kill someone and bring them back, it's really, uh, think of it sort of as a center of all quests and all requests to do things outside the town. Um, that is how all three of you have met. She has created a contract and she is waiting for you all outside the building. And um, you have all accepted that contract. And so she walks up to the three of you who uh, you guys have never met before, by the way. This is uh, more or less your first time meeting each other. Um, and she says, oh, thank you so much for coming. I'm so sorry. I don't have much to offer. However, my brother does, my brother is a prominent member of the Northern Alliance Political Council. And while I can't give you specific numbers, I, I can guarantee you that whatever reward you receive from saving him will be well worth the time spent and the danger lent. And, uh... So she is going to send you guys on your way. Do you guys want to do anything in the town before you leave? Uh, like yes. spend any money or do anything? Yes. What would you like to do, Mr. Assassin? I would like to use my... Uh, let's see here. My low connections. And uh, she did she say where this place was we're going? Uh, yes, yeah, so she's sending you okay. on a mission to a place called Byrock. If you're curious where it is on the map, I'm I'm putting my finger on it over here. Okay. Um, once oh, we got to get uh, Cam back in the game so he can see. Cam, is it still yeah, frozen? You, my computer crashed. I had to reset it. it oh, was, okay. Uh, not going. <laughs> well, yeah. So. <laughs> it's all good. So in in the meantime, um, can I use my low connections to see if there are any? Um, side entrances or less used entrances to the place that we're going uh well that place is like hundreds of miles away so you can't really see that from here you're you're in another town correct but my low connections i oh like you want to ask around if anyone is like from there and knows things about it yeah uh yeah if you guys want to do that um you can head to the local uh back alley more or less and try to find some low lifes Well, what does the rest of the group think? I uh, don't. Don't I also have high connections? Or how do what, what connections do yeah, I? Yeah, you're in a pretty small town, though. I I don't think there's anyone of nobility okay. here except maybe the mayor. Okay. Um, okay. You do have high connections. You're a bluefoot, right? Oh no, that's Luke's character. Uh, yeah, um, you are a Leslu. Yes. You do have high connections because you're an explorer. Um, however, I don't think they're really going to do you much good because uh, this okay. is a pretty run-down, tiny town. Close my door. Okay, well, I'm I'm on board with the idea, nonetheless. Yeah, but uh, quick question. With my high connections, would I have, like, any knowledge of, uh, like, say, how much extra reward there'd be for getting the brother? Um, That is a great question, and yes, we can roll on that. How about it? All right. Um, okay, so if uh, so, what what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll for your uh, wit. This is your social understanding, understanding of how um, politics work up north in the tribal areas. So uh, this is pretty tough because even though you you do know about um, how politics work up there, you're just guessing out of the blue how much money this guy might be worth. So. We're going to do a, a challenging roll of, of uh, 13. So go ahead and roll on your wit. And your wit is plus 3. Okay. So you've got to hit 13 after adding 3 to whatever you roll. That Unfortunately, that did no. not do it. That was a 6. So uh, that was a pretty, pretty big failure. You uh, So basically... Um, Fenric sits there and scratches his head and looks very thoughtful <laughs> and and then just goes Durr! and and uh, doesn't learn anything, unfortunately. Okay, so what about mine? Or he says, I, I want some uh, shawarma or something. I don't know. All right. Um, 
Rob, do you have high connections? I remember we were talking about this just a few seconds. Yeah, ago. no, I know. We're doing your low connection thing in a second, but um, uh, I, I do not have high connection. Cam could also make an attempt at this. Uh, okay, sure. I'll, I'll roll see. for you, Cam. Okay. While you're loading back up, oh, are you trying to load back up, or did you just give up on the computer? I'm, I'm my computer is really bugging out right now for some reason. I don't. I'm not going to depend on it. Ooh. All right, you rolled a yeah. twelve. Um. Let's see your wit is plus one so mm, unfortunately just... did not quite make it wait a minute okay oh no it was a 13 wasn't 15. it yes yeah. i'm sorry i was thinking so he, 15. he barely knows something about it you barely know something <laughs> um you know that this reward is probably in the range of 10 coins each um keep in mind like really good weapons cost five so that's that's a pretty sizable reward okay okay so um, it's somewhere in the realm of 30 coin, thirty to 50 coins, depending. Okay. Uh, now we're going to do some back alley shenanigans with Rob, or with yep. uh, Dale, the assassin here. Yep. So you guys, uh, you guys make your way after Dale suggests that he might know a guy. Uh, you or, make your... Wait. What if I go alone? Because I don't want to be seen with these, you know, high class... <laughs> people that might be killed right when they enter the back alley. Yeah, that's fine. Um, you're you're also alone if you get attacked. But okay, so um, Dale decides to go it alone and go into the back alley and see if he can find a guy who can tell him a little bit more about the town of Byrock. So go ahead and roll. Uh, actually, hold on. It's gonna be a different roll for you. It's not. I don't think it's gonna be wit. Um, it's, it's more like strategy, like uh, yeah, it's a calculation roll because you're trying to see like if eh, yeah, yeah, we're just gonna give it to you. So get go do a calculation roll against thirteen. Okay, go for it. That's eight plus your calculation of one. Unfortunately, you did not find anybody. There's plenty of low lifes and uh, people who look like they're down on their luck hanging out in the alley, but no one here looks like any more than just someone who's trying to survive. Okay. So uh, that was unfortunate. A failed attempt. So uh, you're going to make your way back to the group here? Yeah. All right. Um, while we're waiting for Cam to load in, I'm going to roll on the environment table. Excuse me. Okay. Which is... Uh... Okay, so just so you're aware of uh, the mission itself, how long it takes... Um, it's roughly a two days journey, barring any sort of thing that would slow you down. Okay. All right. So uh, first, let me roll on the desert table. It is now day one. You guys have begun on foot, by the way, down to Byrock. You don't own any pack animals or or land ships or anything like that. Okay. And uh, let's see how we do. I got to roll one here. That's a four. There is no wrong roll. It's totally random. One, give me a sec to look at these. Uh, you come across emissaries of the prophetess. These are awakened individuals who um, are completely under her control. So these are not the kind of awakened people you're looking for. Um, they, uh, okay, let's see. If you, interesting. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> All right. So a uh, little bit of lore for you guys. Um, okay. uh, people who are, so first of all, people who are awakened, as I explained to you guys during character creation, very, very powerful. However, they're also very squishy um, and their power is limited in fights. Um, now in the book, in, in the universe, during the time that you're playing, most awakened individuals, all but a few, um, are under the control of the prophetess. Think of her like uh, the Emperor, if you know Star Wars, except if the Emperor mm -hmm. had a complete mental connection to every single clone and, and could, like, control their bodies if he wanted to. Mm -hmm. So um, these guys are completely brainwashed. They are servants of the prophetess. However, um, the upside is they don't really care about non-awakened individuals. They're always on the hunt for awakened individuals who are not part of their little club of losers. So um, there is a chance you can get out of combat with them because they're not attacking you exactly. They're passing you. Um, however, you guys have to find a way to uh, look um, inconspicuous, just kind of 
not interesting to these guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some wit rules for each of you. Okay. Um, now, each of you have to hit a nine or better to not draw the attention of these guys and okay. to basically pass them and go on your merry way. If any of you fail, then uh, it could get interesting really quickly. Okay. All right, so we're going to start with... Um, We'll start with Fenric. Go ahead and roll against a wit of nine. Okay. I believe you have. He's he's got it. Don't, uh, don't worry about calculating. Holy crap! Yeah. <laughs> so he's he's walking he's, past him, looking cool. Yeah, he's whistling uh, whistling Dixie or whatever, and uh, they they don't even notice him. He's completely uninteresting to them. Um, okay, so. Um, Theo, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll for you. Okay. You still trying to get in? <laughs> yeah. Steam Steam decided to update. Oh yeah. All right. Cool. Let me roll for you. So we're going for a nine. You have a what? You have a plus one one wit. Yep. Yeah. I should probably write those on the cards to make it easier on myself. All right. So yes, you, you succeed. That's a thirteen. That's a very good roll. All right, last but not least is Dale. Go ahead and roll. Uh, That's an well, eight. I got it. I've got it. Plus you, have one. A, you have a wit yeah. of one. Ho, oh, oh, ho, barely. So I'm, I'm like staring at him as I pass by. <laughs> no, no, you got like this big goofy <laughs> grin on your face. Like you, you do not look like an assassin at all. And one of them looks over at you and, and kind of stops for a moment. And then just goes, ah, and then just keeps going. <laughs> how, how many people uh, were in this group here? Three. Oh, in the uh, in the Awakened group? Yeah. Uh, two. Two? Oh, oh okay. Yes. Uh, I didn't say it, but yeah, uh, that's because that's like uh, backdoor stuff that doesn't get spoken out loud. But yeah, it's basically um, the size of the group minus one is the mission-specific encounter. Okay. okay, so you guys have made it through. Um, you guys have made it through your first probable problem. Now, here's the thing: every day that you spend out in the desert without rations is going to cause you to gain a level of exhaustion up to level four. Uh, if you make it to level four, you guys just all collapse and you've essentially died because no one's coming for you. Um, so there's two things you can do. One is you can just take the hit. And um, net tomorrow, you'll tomorrow meaning in a few seconds here, you're going to have negative one to all of your rolls as long as you're in the desert. Or you guys can attempt to find some uh, local wildlife to hunt and then uh, encounter and hunt it and try to turn it into rations. Uh, pot that twist. Can we stop at one of the twist. cities that are along the way here? Um, not for the first day, you can't, no. Boneyard is so, a cannibal city, so you really don't want to go there. Uh, like, you're not going. <laughs> you're not going south to Shining. You're uh, heading a quicker route over the desert to Watchtower and then by Rock. Okay, so off the road. So you're off the beaten path right now. Yeah. Okay. That's, um, that's the part I was missing. There's no city nearby. However, um, there you are close enough to the mountains that there is some wildlife. You just it's going to take you guys some rolls to find it. Okay. Oh, you're back, Cam. Good. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Group think? Try choosing green again. It should fix it. Okay. So, what do you. Should I wait for everything to come in or should I just choose it? Say, say that again? Uh, never mind. Never mind. Yep, you got it. Okay, cool. Um, so, you guys can discuss amongst yourself what you, what you want to do. You want to take the hit or do you want to try to do some hunting? I feel like hunting would be a good idea. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. Hey question for you uh oh grateful uh master here would the natural stability uh help me out in any way the naturalist uh that'll help you find medicines from the local wildlife that won't help you forage actually you know what no that should help you forage what am i talking about um mm. you can attempt to forage uh however if you do that, you won't be with the other two while they're out looking for animals, if that's what they choose to do. Um, if it's just going to take a few seconds for uh, Fenric to look around for things, we should wait until he tries to, and then if he, he says, oh, nothing here, then we should hunt animals. 
Okay, we can do that. So, Fenric, let me have you roll three dice. Um, well, you're, you'll always roll three dice. But let me have you roll against your calculation. So this is your um, knowledge of the land, essentially. And uh, if, you, if you hit the number, you can turn this foraging into one ration. If you get one level above the number, which would be, uh, I think it's 12, uh, you get two rations. And if you strike a crit, which would be 15, then you can turn it into three rations. And in the opposite direction, if you fail critically, then um, you, you, you throw three rations out. You make well. We'll see what happens. So um, <laughs> yeah, he just starts eating his hand or something. All right, um, go ahead and roll against your calculation of what is it? Three, two, two. Okay. So that is a twelve. Um, that is two rations for your team. You found some cactus fruit nearby. Um, that was perfectly preserved. No, no creatures or people had seemed to have picked it recently. So this is great. You've turned that into two rations. Next up is going to be Cam or uh, Theo. Uh, Theo, mm -hmm. since you are an explorer, let's see. Could he use his piloting skill? <laughs> no. <laughs> and there's no rich people in the desert to ask for food. Um, you're done that. That, that might have been good to skip what you guys encountered earlier, but you were fine anyway. Um, mechanically inclined and studied. Okay, so nothing, nothing special there. You're just going to do a regular roll against a calculation okay. of zero, and you have to hit a nine or better to even spot an animal, let alone um, okay. hunt it. Go ahead. So just drag a box over the three dice and hit R on them a couple times to roll them. They'll they'll roll multiple times in the air for you. There you go. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. Yeah, it's really fun. Ooh. Oh, uh, uh, no, not only did you fail, but you, tr you tripped in the bushes while you thought you were, you were finding a giant desert scarab, and the sound has made it so all the other wildlife nearby has uh, scattered. So when um, Dale rolls, he's going to have a plus one difficulty to his roll to even spot anything. Oh, no. Now, as, as, uh, as my, my uh, teammate is causing a distraction, and causes some things to run out. Can I use that to my advantage to say, you know, I, I now know where the things are. Unfortunately, you hear a lot of skittering and noise. You don't see anything. Oh man! So go ahead and roll against a ten. In your case, you have a wit of plus zero, right? Or a calculation uh, of plus zero or plus one? Oh, calculation is a uh, plus one. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So go ahead and roll. Okay. You need to hit a ten. And they did. Nailed it. All right. So uh, thankfully, Dale, although the although the creatures did spook a little bit, Dale does catch sight of a giant scarab beetle. Now, these are not giant scarab beetles in the earthly sense, as in like the size of your hand. These are the size of a dog. They are huge, oh. huge creatures. Okay. And, and they're well armored. However, they're, uh, well, you'll see. Okay, so uh, it is now time to hunt the beetle. Okay. Um, Can I go first since I spotted it? Yeah. Well, yeah. You. You're also, I think, the fastest. Oh no, you're not. Uh, Cam is. But yeah, you can go first since you're there. Are you sure? Oh okay. yeah. <clears throat> Explorer is really fast. I think he's faster. Yeah, but he he was too busy falling and tripping. <laughs> he quickly <laughs> tripped. That's what he did. Okay. Um. Into a ninja roll and got back to my feet. Plus, yep. I give uh plus one speed to my allies right now. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. So, um, this is going to be, this is not going to be a surprise attack because he's already spooked. So he knows you're coming. Um, how it's just going to be a normal combat. Uh, let me just pull out. The... Oh, and one more thing. As, as Theo was looking around and tripping, I was actually reading my throwing star and my uh, wrist bow. <laughs> uh, they are readied at the start of combat anyway. You don't have to do that. Okay, so um, this is a rat, obviously, but I don't have a beetle, so it'll just have to do. And let's see, I'm going to put you guys on the... I should probably be the furthest one back, just because I was foraging somewhere else. Okay, uh, Rob, right here. Oh, hang on. Oh, I'm I, I got to turn snapping back on for the 
for the encounter. Oh no, that's okay. I just had to get zoomed in a little. I wouldn't worry about it. I'm, I'm there. All right, uh, Cam, go ahead and grab your little dude. You just hold down left click on him to, and drag him over. Um, I want you right over here. And then, um, Luke, go ahead and grab your guy. And you're basically going to be right next to Cam on, on the right here. Uh, okay. So each of these spaces we're going to call 10 feet. Um, near weapons, I believe, are 30 feet. Uh, I don't think there is medium. And then far weapons, I think, are 90 feet. Um, I could be wrong. Tim will correct me if he watches the stream later. All right. So uh, starting with... Oh, and then as far as initiative goes, um, let's pull this up. I do have a giant scarab. He's got a speed of 8. What are your guys' speeds here? No. Six. 12, I think, for me. So Luke is going to be last. Yeah, so it's going to go... It's going to go... Um, Dale, Theo, Scarab, um, Fenric. Okay, so Dale. One, so can I get plus three? Uh, everyone, even with your. Pl oh, wait, you have plus three, don't you? Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, uh, let me write that on the card uh, right now. Real quick. Just to so you have nine speed. And you have, so it's going to, sorry, so it's going to go Dale, Theo, Fenric, Scarab. That'll be great. It's from right to left, basically. Okay. Um, so starting with Dale, uh, what would you like to do, sir? I am oh, what are, your two, what are your weapons? I, I already said. I didn't hear you. My wrist bow and my throwing star. Okay. So what are you firing first? Um, yes. I'm firing the wrist bow. Okay. Okay. And doing it now. 12. Okay. That is a successful hit. And you do uh, two damage with that, I believe. Yep. Unfortunately for you, this scarab is basically a walking nature's version of a tank so though your wrist bow hits true uh though the bolt hits true it bounces off the shoulder of the uh of the giant scarab beetle and and skitters off into the bushes hmm okay instead of attacking with my other weapon can i ditch my wrist bow and equip my uh you can switch to your scimitar that'd be your other attack dagger yeah, that would be your other move for this round, would be switching yeah, to your yeah. scimitar. Because because the uh, first range attack didn't really do too well, I'm not too confident the throwing star will be any better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is a good guess on your part. Um, <laughs> give me a second. Let me look up armor, because this guy's got a ton of armor, let me just tell you. And if it's per... I think it's the armor is factored in per round, so all of your guys' damage contributes to getting through his armor. Um, okay. I just I just need to be sure of that. Okay, let's see here. I wish Tim was here; he could help me with this. And um, during the test, you said movement is also like an action, so you can't do an attack and a move, something like that. You could do a light attack and a move, since you were using a rispo. That's a light attack weapon. But I'm also using part of my turn for uh uh. In your case, weapons. you cannot move. No, you've done two things. All right, uh, let's see here. Armor. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't explain armor in our rule book. This is why we're testing this. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up my own rule, which is essentially all the damage you guys do on a turn contributes to getting through his armor. So if enough of you do enough damage, um, you will be actually damaging his health. Okay. But the okay. next round that armor resets essentially and you have to try to get through him again. You're working together on this. Okay, so up next is uh, Theo or Cam. So Cam, what weapon would you like to attack with? Um. Okay, so I'm definitely going to use my uh, improvised pistol first. And do we get to do two things per round or per per? Uh, These turn? are both light weapons, so you can do two light attacks or one heavy attack. So in this case, yes, you can attack once with each weapon. Um, okay, but um, you can't because you're not out. you're not close enough to him. So. 
in yeah. this case you can only attack him and choose to try to run toward him or just not do anything that's or, what i was gonna say or give initiative mm -hmm. to the next guy uh yeah question. okay yeah what's up rom does he have a penalty if he's holding both of those weapons at the same time um do you have a dual wield penalty i don't remember if your guy can dual wield by default it doesn't look like he has a bonus like that no yeah so if you want to go into battle holding both of these you'll take a penalty so i recommend just using your pistol or scimitar for now yeah i'm gonna go in with just the pistol and i want to move in closer as well okay so let's take the shot first and then we'll move you in okay. closer because okay. firing at point blank will actually penalize you which is weird i think we're gonna fix that oh nice so that is a 12 that is definitely a successful hit uh, you fire your single shot pistol, and just like um, just like Dale before you, you hit the scarab, but you hit him at a better angle. You're actually behind him, and this shot does somewhat penetrate his armor, and the scarab hisses loudly, and you see a small bit of black blood begin to drip on the ground. Cool. Okay, and for uh, moving in... You don't have to roll to move in. You just it's it's a no. Oh, okay. Um, it's and false. You can move up to thirty, up to thirty feet. Um, so that's three spaces. You can get right up on him if you want, or start to make your way towards your ally. Whatever you want to do. Or right up on Rob. I meant. I can sorry. move this far or this far. Uh, uh one, like two. One... You can move one more. Cool. Yep. Um. Do you want to be that tells close me... though? No, yeah, something tells me I should stay right there. Yeah, you don't have to go your full length. This is not like you could sprint or nothing. Okay. Oh, I would cool. go, but he's so close, and I don't want to run into him. <laughs> we, All right, we so... We didn't talk about this before, but on on uh, Theo's next turn, will he be able to equip a different weapon and attack if he's e within range? E equipping a light weapon is part of your turn, and attacking with it would be the other if if he's right next to him. Okay. And some so things are just some things are just incidental. Like if he's one space away, I'm not gonna screw you for it. I'm just gonna let you do it. So it, it's very narrative based. It's not entirely rules based. All right. So uh, last but not least is uh, Fenric. Fenric, what would you like to do? Would you like to attack or what? Uh. Oh wow! Look at you've got the musket. Musket out. <laughs> yeah, dude, you definitely yeah. want to attack with that. Yeah. Yeah. That's here's a very another, powerful weapon. Here's another question. Yes. Theo is right in the line of sight now. No, we do not do line of sight. Okay. Uh, I would assume he's shooting over his shoulder or Theo knows to duck. We, we're, if he gets it, a critical miss, then does Theo die? Then he may. <laughs> if you fail bad enough, I will punish you in some way. We'll see. Well, I'm not the one who's going to be punished if the end doesn't happen. So. Where did the dice go? By the, oh, they're right there. Okay, yeah. They were camouflaged. Well, okay. Actually, so, you could be punished because of the thing could blow up in your hands. But yeah, but... All right, so Fenric, go ahead and uh -huh. do your roll. Um, you're, you're rolling to hit this guy with your musket, I assume. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, so that's a 12. That's why you guys are doing great rolls tonight. Um, that is a successful roll. Uh, let's see, your musket ignores Four one armor. Damage. Well, it doesn't matter. You guys have blasted his armor out anyway. Mm -hmm. But um, does it... Man, it's such a good weapon. <laughs> okay, um, so you take your shot, and oh man, does it hit perfectly. You fire right through the back of the creature, and even though uh, they're not... Uh, they don't have spines like a, like a mammal would... Uh, you fire right up where a spine would be, and you split his shell in two. And essentially, the kinetic power of your shot is so powerful, you've split this scarab in two, and he is now dead. Yay! Um, and because it is a giant scarab, I'm going to give you guys two rations for him. So you have, as a team... In fact, that's, that's why I had an extra card. As a team, uh, you, have two, you have four total rations. You haven't eaten any yet. Just give me a sec, let me... Is it under miscellaneous? What crap is the card? I don't remember. Oh, there it is. Alright. So, uh, I'll just call this team inventory. Okay. This is uh, stuff that you as a team have to decide if you ever want to sell it or anything. Okay. 
And if you don't agree on it, you, you don't sell it. Okay, so uh, you have four rations as a team, so you can feed yourself for the night, thankfully. I'm assuming you guys want to do that? I think so. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. you don't want to take exhaustion. That would be bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, so good job on your first encounter. You have successfully defeated the giant scarab. And uh I reload thing... my wrist bow. Yeah, all your at the end of each encounter, all of your weapons and everything are reloaded and okay. and returned to you uh just incidentally. Okay. Alright, so first night is complete. You are now on the second day of your journey. If you survive this day, your third day will be the actual mission itself. So we're gonna roll a new encounter for a new day. Grab these. And you guys can just leave your, your things on the map there for now. They don't okay. need to go anywhere. First die. It's a one. Second. Wait, why can't I get, there we go. Second is a five. Um, let's see here. You stumble across a group of Suahim lizards. Um, now, Suahim lizards are what eat scarabs, so you can imagine what you're about to face. Um, you, you have two options here. You guys can attempt to skirt around these lizards, which will use your agility, because you're basically sneaking, and I'm sure our assassin will do it just fine. The rest of you might have some problems. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing is you can just choose to face them. There's two of these guys. And I, I will not tell you their stats, because that's no fun. Could we prepare an ambush for them? or? Um, Ooh, yeah, if you yeah, successfully yeah. sneak around them, you can ambush them and turn them into rations if you defeat them. If, These guys are worth a lot of rations. we see them coming and we're all like behind a bush or something? Uh, we're in the desert. So you need, to, you need to do agility, first of all, if you want to attempt to ambush them. Um, so you're going to roll a against a difficult roll of 12, and you're going to roll on your agility. So all three of you have to land a 12 or better to not be seen by these things. Okay, so yeah. either way, we might have to fight them, so I'm, I'm yeah. for it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's yeah, ambushing it. them versus sneaking around them, it's the same kind of roll. So you're going to have to roll okay. this anyway. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Who Let's start from right to left. So, since your initiative's higher, yeah. So, Rob, go ahead and roll first. That is a ten. Plus uh, three. Plus three. Yes, that is a success. Um, okay. Up next is Theo. Let's see if you can do a twelve. What's your agility, by the way? I can't see. It, it, oh, it's already yeah. done. It, it, it's it, done. Plus it's, two. Oh, great roll! Wow, sixteen, so, seventeen, eighteen. Not only are you successfully sneaking around them and preparing an ambush, you outdid this by two levels here. So that's actually a crit. Um, so um, you, yeah, your sneaking is me. your sneaking is so good that you actually guided Fenric in behind you. And Fenric automatically gets a successful roll on an oh, ambush. Cool. Oh, cool! So, nice. so awesome. you guys you. are going to get a successful ambush. Now, this is how the ambush is going to work. Your first initial, your first round, you will not have to hit armor. If these if these creatures have armor, it's ignored for the first round. You're going to go right into them. I have a question. Yes, I can dual wield, and I have two weapons that say makes no noise. If I can do some su successful rolls. Can I do that before combat? Uh, no, not in this case, because you're not sneaking up on a sleeping target. You guys are just ambushing a target. Um, so all that really means is when it's their turn to come after you guys, they're not going to see you for that first round. So you're safe for at least two rounds here. They're not going to come after you. They're going to come after your buddies. Okay, I want to do that still. Yeah, well, it's incidental. It, it, it's part of your weapon. <laughs> Okay, so uh, starting with our assassin, Dale, go ahead and roll for your first weapon, which is what, your wrist bow? Oh, let me put the uh, yeah. where's our, where's some bad our, guys uh... down. Hold on. I do have something that looks semi like a lizard here. Oh, um, and do we get a bonus for doing this sneaky maneuver as well? Depends on how well you do it. No, I mean, since, since we're... Doing an ambush. Like, no, the uh, bonus is that you bypass the enemy's armor. So you're doing direct damage oh, to their health pool. Okay. I gotcha. Gotcha. With it. Oh, there's actually a thing called 
Lizards. Ooh. Even though that's a wyvern. Holy crap, that's huge. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's what we're facing. Yeah. Good luck! That's what eats the beetles. <laughs> Alright, here we oh, go. Oh cool, he moves! That's so cool! <laughs> All right, so we'll do two of these guys. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> okay. Oh, you, really? Okay. So I'll have to get okay, some so, figurines later. But anyway, there you go. That's what you're up against. I'm also going to be targeting the closest one first. You guys are up here on a ledge. Oh, uh, so these guys have to go around the terrain to get to you. So this is a yeah, very so, successful ambush here. So I'm actually here. I'm safer. That's fine. Yeah. Um, go ahead and do your first attack, which is the wrist bow, correct? Yes. All right. Roll them. Ready? Yep. Okay, you had to hit a 9. You hit an 11. So that is a successful hit. I'm assuming you're going for the closer one because you can't reach the other one from there. Does my bonus make it a crit? Uh, oh, I don't think that was high. Oh. Uh, nine, the, you'd have to hit a 15, I believe, to get a crit. Okay. So, uh, no. You yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be the closer one. Okay, so with your wrist bow, you... Uh, it's uh, two damage. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so you fire your wrist bow. The bolt sails through the air and plants itself right into the neck of the lizard. It didn't hit an artery, but man, did it knock that thing sideways. Okay. All right, and so... My second up? attack. Yep, all right, so go ahead and roll your, uh, your stars. Yep. Nine, that is also a successful hit. You follow mm -hmm. it up with a left-hand star throw, very professional... And it basically plants itself just in the side, just below the rib cage of the lizard, and nearly knocks the wind out of him. And he screeches, Rah! Yeah, He is in pain. He's hurting bad right now. Okay. All right. Who is next? Uh, next would be Theo. Okay. And I just want to use my pistol. Go nuts. All right. That is an eight. Unfortunately, that is. Not a successful shot. Um, yeah, as expected from a pistol. <laughs> yep. All right. So up next is going to be um, Fenric busting out the freaking yeah. musket, dude. That musket's so cool. <laughs> we gotta, yeah, I gotta cool. come up with like a cool melee weapon because there's no melee weapon that equals that thing. All right. So go ahead and roll your musket. Uh, oh, actually, wait, wait. Before you do that, we won't count that roll, but. Um, oh, yeah. A good thing too so do you want to hit the nearer one or the far one because that one oh, can hit, hit it the, oh, the you said the nearer one looks hurt right near one is hurting pretty bad yeah i think you should finish that one off yeah i'm gonna finish it off all right go ahead and roll this roll will count <laughs> all right yes that is a successful roll all right so you aim your musket and just like your encounter the day before with the giant scarab you take a shot and it rings absolutely true. Hits that hits that giant lizard right through the midsection. In fact, it it ricochets off of the throwing star that was already planted in its side and buries itself <laughs> deep in the guts of the lizard. That lizard is out. All right. All right. He's still so, moving. Uh, yeah, he's he's uh, breathing his last breath. <laughs> Death throws. All right. So uh, next lizard's gonna move, and he obviously can't. Attack you, so he's gonna waste both of his moves. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, so starting the initiative over again from right to left. Dale, your wrist right. bow has been fired, so you. Yep, so I'm gonna use my star. All right, go ahead and throw your star. Ugh. That is a well, success. Yeah, that yep, that's a nine. Um, you throw your star, and um, unfortunately, it just cannot penetrate the height of the lizard. It bounces off his pointed scales on, on the ridge of his back and flies off into the distance, and you hear a cling as it hits a rock somewhere. Okay. Uh, All you've done action. is upset this creature. Second action. Um, I'm going to actually do a reload on my wrist bow. Okay, so that's your turn. Up next is going to be Theo. 
Um, you've already fired your pistol, so either you need to reload it or you need to grab your sword and, and go run in. Okay. Um, so do I have to roll to get closer to be in range, or do I have, or am I No, in movement is just, it's just done, so you move three spaces per move, and you can do up to two moves in a turn. Okay. But, but you won't be able to attack it, because that'll be two things. Yeah. Okay. You don't have to roll for that. What do you want to do? Oh, okay. I'll just go in whatever direction. Um, one, two. So I'd go... Um, uh, this is a cliff, you, so you need to go yeah. around here. You have to roll agility for that. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. if you want, you could try to scale the cliff. I mean, this isn't that high, but you will have to roll uh, an agility roll to do that. Like, well, cool, like how though. high? Cause I, I, well, because, I mean, I think it would be good to get behind him. It's it significantly cool. difficult, okay. but it, it will oh, look cool. I'll, just, I'll stay there, then. All right, so that's one, two, three. You can move once more if you'd like. Um, you get two small moves. Or a move and like a reload, okay. or you... yeah, you don't. Do really... I have to roll for the reload? Uh, no, the reload is just the other move, and it's done. Okay. Do you okay. want to reload uh, your pistol? I'll... Yeah, I want to reload, and then how I can move this close? No, you can't move anymore. It's okay. either move and so move, yeah, or move and reload, or move and attack. Oh, all together. Okay, just to reload then. Yep. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so you instead of minor actions and major actions, they're all just actions. Yeah, unless it was a heavy weapon, okay. then reloading that is your entire turn. You can't do anything else. Okay. So once your musket's empty, if you want to reload that, that's your whole turn. Okay, so okay. last but not least is going to be Fenric. Fenric, what would you like to do? Taking one big shot at that big Oh, thing. he's firing right. with the musket, baby. And he's kind of behind it right now, so does he get a bonus? No. Oh. Not in this Sorry. case. Sorry, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> yep, go ahead and roll. All right. Oh, barely. Oh, Woo! Yeah, that was close. No, he... All, right. All right. So you did hit him. You fired your musket with a loud crack. It goes off. And hold on, I got to see his stats here. All right. The musket shot buries itself in his rear and actually knocks his foot out. But he doesn't quite lose stride because he is a four-legged creature. And he screeches loudly. Blood is gushing out of his right leg. <laughs> All right. But he's not dead. All right. So it's his turn. One, Wait. two. Wait. Uh, there's a second action to the uh, turn that's currently in play, right? No. He fired a heavy weapon. Oh, heavy that's ball. it. Okay. I gotcha. Heavy I'm weapons right. are one off. Okay. So two, three. And a dragon or lizard is very unhappy with you. He is going to attack Mr. Uh, Theo. <laughs> so, Theo, good luck. And uh, your to hit is also nine. It's like him. And here we go. Let's see, I got to look up his damage real quick. All right, armor, don't fail me. <laughs> oh, what a punk. Oh, he's got. Oh, yeah. So he has multi attack. So he attacks oh, twice. No. Um, oh, boy. Uh, his uh -oh. first one is going to be a bite. He's going to attempt to just straight up bite you. He's going to try to bite you right in the midsection here. <laughs> okay. He succeeds and takes a big chomp into you. Thank God you are wearing plate armor. <laughs> um, yeah. Your armor, he basically, he, he crunches down and you can hear the metal squealing, but he cannot get through the metal. Although you're going to be bruised tomorrow, you're not injured. So, seeing that he's failed in biting you, he's going to use his second attack, and he's going to whip his tail at you. Mm. That is also a successful hit. His giant body swings around, and his tail flies through the air. Bong! Just hits your armor very, very <laughs> loudly. And uh, you may be slightly deafened from the noise. However, your armor yet again has saved you. Um, I'm not going to tell you how closely you came to not having your armor because that would give away his damage but uh your armor did save you this round so it is now dale's oh. turn now is he still turned around because he swung around his body or is he facing us again uh no he's facing you again so basically he oh. he turned swung he's his tail he swung his tail in a round motion but he's okay. facing you again all right since my things are reloaded i'm going to use both my ranged again or did i Wait, did I 
Did I attack with both last time? Uh, you reloaded, reloaded your wrist bow last time, and you okay. just attacked with your throwing stars, which your guy gets to throw infinitely. It's He's yep. Legolas, essentially. Yeah, so I am stars. going to capitalize on that and do my wrist bow first. Okay, go for it. That is a successful hit. And, okay, so you fire... Oh, wait, uh, I gotta look at the stats on this wrist bow. Does it bypass armor at all? No. Not. Okay, so you fire the Rispo bolt, and again, it hits him. Unlike last time, though, it is not bouncing off the lizard. It is burying itself right in his guts. Regardless of if he wins or loses today, he is probably going to bleed out anyway. He is mm -hmm. not down, though. Okay. Um, I'm going to throw my throwing star, and I'm going to throw it where the, the foot was. I'm going to throw it right up the stump. <laughs> You're going to go after his mortal injury? Uh, okay, so if you want to do that, I'm gonna add uh, I'm gonna add two modifier to it. So you've got to hit a twelve, okay. but if you do hit it, um, it will kill him. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys something cool for it. Okay, ready? Okay, you good with that? You want to try to hit a twelve? I want to try. Okay. Otherwise, it's just one damage. So you know, whatever. Yep, go for it. Yeah. I believe in you. <laughs> oh um... no! <laughs> Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, that's... Do I get a bonus for my stats? No, no, your stats Ooh. don't affect your straight damage rolls. Um, do you have anything that could help you reload or anything like that? Um, Start with unlimited throwing I don't sword. think so. Sneaky, master of two. No, unfortunately, you don't have anything that could help you try that again. Oh, but, but hang on. Uh, look at what I rolled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Theo, you are up next. Okay. Can I, like, aim for his head since I'm so close? Um, there's no way to, like, declare a critical. Like, you could do what Rob just did and say that uh, you want to go for a cool shot, and I'll just make it more difficult. But okay. otherwise, you just do um, Do you want to try to hit a 12? No, let's just... I'm just going to take, uh, take a shot. Okay, well, I think you... F didn't you fire your gun last round? Uh, I reloaded, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. So go ahead and fire your, your gun. Okay. That is a Ooh, successful barely. hit. You did effectively hit him. And by the way, Rob, he only had one health, so you would have killed him either way if you'd gotten through him. Oh. Um, so your shot does, in fact, hit the, hit the lizard. I want to say dragon because he looks like a dragon. Uh, your <laughs> shot hits the lizard on the other foot, and he drags himself to a stop. A trail of blood is behind him. He just cannot continue on and lets out one final cry ah! and then he just dies here we go Blech. Blech. okay <laughs> so um you have two types of of loot you can choose from uh and uh, both have their benefits you can either you can either skin both of these lizards for suahim lizard hide uh worth a total of about 10 coins once you get to town and can sell it or you can uh, turn them into three rations each, which would be six. Or you can do half of those. So one turns into three rations, the other turns into hide worth about five. Since we've got one ration left, which I don't think uh, Brandon put on the card, oh, yeah. I think we might want to turn in some, or turn half into rations, half into yeah. the skin. Half and half sounds good. I agree. Okay. So let's do that. We have four rations now. And we're going to add one Suahim wizard hide. Which I'll just put five coin in parentheses so we don't forget. All mm -hmm. right. So you guys have successfully skinned one and turned the other into good eating tonight. All right, um, it is now the end of the second day. Tomorrow morning, you will arrive at the place where this girl's <laughs> brother has been taken, and uh, who knows what you're going to encounter. Um, now, uh, you can... Uh, I assume you want to eat your rations, right? Eat from yeah. exhaustion, or do you want to yeah. take an exhaustion point? No, rations sound good. Eat. Rations. One. So See, you I'm thinking... You guys have survived another night without taking a penalty. This is good. 
Now the way it works is the day that you um, the day that you start the actual encounter of the game, um, I still roll the two dice um, on this okay. environment table. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay. So let's roll the first one is a three. Second one is a one. Okay, three and one is. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Oh, this is better. At least you're not fighting something. Okay. So, um, your t your party has come across a sandstorm, or more accurately, a sandstorm has come across you. It's not like uh, anyway. At least half of the <laughs> players have to make a daunting calculation check. Who would like? So half is rounded up. So it's going to be two of you. Which two of you would like to attempt to roll calculation? to keep yourselves from having to travel an extra day through the sandstorm, considering you don't have rations. Um, can I use my cloak to gain a bonus on, on my roll? Uh, no. Uh, you're not sneaking through the storm, you're surviving no, 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 the storm. No, no. I have a hoodie. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you cannot. All right, um, who, which two of you would like to attempt calculation rolls? Uh, let's see who the stats are. Can, uh, it's like our alchemist and our there. our alchemist and our assassin have calculation bonus. Yep. Yeah. You can you can skip random encounters. Do we want to do that? I would. Is, is Sandstorm a random <laughs> encounter though? It, uh, whenever I roll those two dice, that's considered a random encounter. Okay, that makes sense. Um, if we if we all agree, yeah, I'm down for that. Yeah. It doesn't hurt you in any way, so. Only thing is, if tomorrow something crappy gets rolled, um, well, it won't be tomorrow because this is the third day. So, yeah, you're safe. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. So thanks yeah. to the explorer in your group, you guys expertly navigate through the sandstorm. Sandstorms don't mean jack to an explorer. So you guys are totally safe. <laughs> no one was injured. You just got a little sand in. I hate sand. It's so coarse. Yeah. I was just about to make that <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now you are um, at your destination. Let me go back to my mission here to make sure I do this right. There it is. We're doing Save the Awaken from the Spire, right? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Okay, let's see. Oh, boy. Okay, so uh, you guys, you guys have traveled through the desert for a few days. You fought creatures. You're be you're better off for it. You're all quite full. By the way, uh, meat in ruin is very awesome. So you guys are feeling very happy and full of uh, lizard and scarab beetle meat. Um, you have come across a small. Um, they call them monasteries in the book. Uh, they're not a monastery like you and I would think where there's a bunch of friars walking around and they're innocent and you're going you're gonna to murder them all. These guys are awakened warriors and they are very powerful. So in this monastery, uh, now this, this monastery is deep in the desert. It's in Byrock, which uh, is more or less an abandoned town. And uh, the prophetess has turned this town into just a training place where she takes awaken individuals that she's captured and she slowly but surely turns their mind toward her uh towards following her as she does to all awaken individuals and you are approaching the abandoned town of byrock in the distance you see the golden shimmer of the monastery's roof as the sun rises up about nine in the morning um so far you don't see much of anything else you don't see people you you don't uh well what would you like to do I would uh, mm -hmm. like to to uh, ask my teammates if they'd like to look around and see if there's a better way than maybe the front door. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say try and get a view from a distance somehow. All right, so I'm adding in a fun little rule here just because I can. Um, our explorer, once he's looking mm -hmm. for another way in, is going to get a bonus plus one to his nice. role because he is an explorer. Um. And then, uh, Rob, you failed your thing back in the town, so yeah, you don't have anything special there. So yeah, uh, each of you can go, and you're going to try to roll your calculation to see if you can observe a better way into the monastery without raising the alarm. Okay. So let's we're just going to go from right to left again, just because we can. 
So okay. starting with Dale, I want you to roll a calculation. Now this is a very difficult roll, but if you guys fail it, nothing bad happens. You just don't find anything. Okay. Um, I want you, Rob, to try and hit a 15. But that's with the plus one bonus. That's with your plus one. You have to try to hit 15. All righty. Go ahead and roll. Easy. Can you assist someone Easy. in any way? Or... That, that didn't do it. Um, uh, Luke, you were asking if you could assist somebody? Yeah, just I... like without oh. roll, like not me rolling, but give them... Uh... Uh, you're assisting in the sense that you are an extra role yourself, oh, okay. but no, you can't. Okay. You can't donate points to others in this situation. So uh, up next is going to be Theo. Go ahead and roll your calculation, okay. which is plus zero, so it's just a straight roll. And you have to try and hit. What did I say? Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, I didn't do it. Unfortunately, yeah. even with we your plus run. one, because you're an explorer, you did you did not succeed. Last but not least. Okay. Uh, Fenric is going to attempt to pull off the clutch win here. Oh, uh, no. Unfortunately, you guys did not find any other way in. I mean, you could try climbing over the walls or whatever, but there's no bonus to doing that. Um, we should we each, at each other. Regardless of how you enter the complex, you get no bonuses to uh, sneaking or anything. <clears throat> yep. What would you like to do now that you've failed to find a better way in? Um, amongst our failed attempts to find a better way in, do we see any... Uh, we, you said we don't see anybody yet? Yeah. Uh, you don't see anybody yet. You are still outside the complex. Okay. Um, now, I don't like to lead my players along, but Rob, you are a professional sneaker, so... Yep. Um, so you maybe might want to do something here. Maybe I should go in for a closer look. Yes. Okay, so you're going to be rolling on stealth, which is an agility roll. So it's going to be two, plus three, plus, plus two. Three. Um, now, th this is broad daylight. It's nine in the morning here, so there's no, like, going through the shadows, really. I mean, you could mm -hmm. go through the shadows. It won't make a big difference. However... So my noise level is going to be very low. You're very quiet. You're very sneaky. This is, like, what you're really good at. Um, Maybe I just poke my head around for a split second. You need to hit a 15, though, just like these guys did. But that's a 10 or higher, so that's, that's yep, doable. that's doable for you. Um, so, Rob, what would you narrate what you would like to do here? What are you actually trying to do? Uh, my character is going to try not to get into line of sight of anything. So he's going to kind of sneak around, or not not sneak, but uh, be as quiet as he, as he can and uh, poke his head around, a, around Basically the take a look. a second. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's like, uh, what's that movie? Um, Fifth Element, where he looks for like half a second. He's like, there's 15 yeah. of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go f go for it, uh, Corbin Dallas. Oh, it's a success. It's a 13. Oh, man, that was a great success. Wait. Wow. Wait, hang on. Eight, five. Yeah, 13. Yeah, it's an 18 five. on a 15. But plus five. Yeah, 18. And you're up against oh, yeah, yeah. a 15, so you succeeded. <laughs> Don't yeah. defeat yourself now. Um, okay, so you successfully pop your head around the corner very quickly, and then nobody saw you, or at least you don't feel like they saw you. You didn't hear any sort of ruckus. What okay. you spot are two awakened priests. One of them has his hand on a young man who is looking a little battered and bloody, but uh, not, not too much worse for wear. He's got his hand on the back of the young man, and he's chanting something. The other one was basically looking right in the direction that you peeked over, but for some reason did not see you. Okay. Both of these guys look to be in their mid-50s, which um, could mean anything, because in the world of Ruin, um, awakened individuals live twice as long as your standard humans, and prime awakens, which are very powerful, live twice as long as that. So you can they, these guys could be up to two or three hundred years old. Okay, so... Um... You don't, and to, you cannot discern what their powers are, like if they're fire or whatever. Yeah. Uh, to kind of prepare my team, I uh, kind of hold up two fingers and then flex and then one and then <laughs> kind of mimic a, a weak person. And then I, I also say, come on, or not, I don't say it, but I'm like, come on, guys, like with my yeah, hands. Yeah, like, emotion. I got, I got you. All right, hold on. I got to pull up a new map for you guys for this encounter. Just give me a sec. Oh, what a cool map.
I'm going to replace this map with a new one. Standby. I actually have access to a program where I can make all these, but I was lazy today because I had no idea what your encounter would be. Okay. Yo. Oh, oh wow. The grid, the grid makes it kind of uh, weird. Grid is still funky, but I can fix that. Yeah, let's move Wait, this who, side of the way. who is no. taking these things away? No, because the board is... Oh, I thought the board was a bit bigger than that. No, it, it's fine. It's It's yeah. chunkier, but it's okay. Um, okay. okay, so you guys are coming in. Rob, you're right here. Right here? Yep. Uh, the other two guys are right behind you because you basically motion them over, so you guys decide which order you want to be in over there. Um, I've got to add in some little standees. Yep, three so people. Where was the en like the the entrance? Is They're in the here. I'll, I'll put them in here in no, a second. Uh, like where, yeah, where are they at? Then... Where are my Is teammates it... at? Your teammates are right here and right here. Okay, so okay. they they spots. did they followed my direction to you know hurry over. Yeah, uh, you don't want to go there. They'll see you. So yeah, right here. Okay, let me just pull up. Those are lame tokens. Let me see if I got some. Okay, yeah, these will do. Then I'm gonna if have. You, if you want to make. Uh, one just colored red for these. Yeah, I'll do well. that. All right, so the red one, or no, I'm going to make him black. The black one, or the dark tinted one, he's actually not black, he's more like gray. This guy right here, this is the captured guy. Okay. Um, And this guy, ooh, you know what? I'm going to see if you guys can discern what the powers of these guys are before you encounter them. We're going to try one more roll here. Ooh. So this one is going to be a wit-based roll because it's more of a world knowledge. Like, how do you know if a guy is fire awakened or lightning? So um, uh, two of you can roll wit. Which two of you would like to, to roll? Uh, I would. Stats. Uh, Look at the stats. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah so definitely. Yeah, yeah. definitely um, uh, Fenric and Theo, I think. Since Rob Let's got to roll the last one, so uh, starting with Theo, you're you're trying again. This is a difficult Ooh. roll. Uh, F to flip it. Yeah. Um, this is another one you've got to try to hit a fifteen. Okay. And you've got a plus one, right? So you've got to hit a fourteen essentially. Go ahead and roll. All right. Failing doesn't mean anything though, so it's no big deal. That is a big fail. Yeah. Um, you were you started to think, okay, now how do I know which one of those is a fire awakened or if they're both fire awakened? And then you thought, man, I'm hungry. <laughs> so, um, Ooh, that, that you look I was like, I don't know. Fenric, go ahead and give it a roll. You've got a plus three to wit. Um, You've got to hit a fifteen total. Yeah. Yes, he hits it. Nice <laughs> job. All right, so Fenric is able to discern who is what among these two guys based on your description of their, their cloaks. Fenric is not an awakened individual, but he knows a lot about awakened individuals that happened to be a subject he really liked to study back in primary school. All right, so the one who is red is a fire awakened, and the one who is blue is an air awakened. For those who don't remember during the character creation process, red or fire awakened is a very offensive character. And a air awakened is a, more of a mix of offense and defensive abilities. Question: And this guy, the captured guy, was also an awakened, right? Uh, he is a he is an awakened individual. Yes. Um, he's just like very weak at the moment. You do not know if he is brainwashed yet, if he's on your side, or anything. You guys are just gonna have to find out during the encounter. He's bound right now, though, so he can't do anything either way. Okay. Got it. Okay, so um, you guys have successfully snuck up on these guys. Um, however, they are awakened. The Air Awakened has something called Empathy. Um, air Awakened Empathy. Basically, they, they know you're there now. Well, they know something's there. Something's up. So you cannot ambush these. However, yep. you will be able to start the first round using normal speed stats. So let me check theirs. I think you're all faster than them anyway. But... Here we go. 
weekend, 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 where are they at? Oh wow, he didn't write them down? Really? I'm just double checking to make sure. Oh, holy balls. Okay. Um, you should, you this should be, be interesting. Cards, right? Well, I can just pull up a standard awakened. Um, so I'm just going to give these guys. Encountered. The encountered awakens are different than your one like player awakens. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, these guys have a. Sp oh, yeah. Yeah, they have a pretty slow speed. Okay, cool. So um, it is going to be the same order as usual, right to left, and then they go. Okay. Um, um, so, question. Since I'm behind something right now, uh, can I peek, or do I have to move out to start my attacks? Um, it's going to be an incidental, but you, you're going to have to attack from this one right here next to you, but it's not going to count as a turn. It'll just be... You can do two things there. Oh, Basically. I have a quick question. Even uh, if you there... attack from around the corner... Um, it's it's not like a sneak attack. They'll they'll come after you. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying if if that's a thing, if if even if it's a normal attack, would I be able to attack from here if I was able to feel like peek around or put my arm around? Yes. Yes, okay. you can attack from your current position. And what was okay. the question? Um, is there or is this is this uh, a secret? Uh is there multiple ways in? Like can we ambush them like we did before? The the map can we like the map is the yeah, multiple like, ways in. So if you wanted, you could come up here and try to come in. It's not going to be an ambush. It'll just be a different angle. Because they know you're yeah, there. They have an air awakened who detects all three of you. Oh, so they'll know where we're at when we move. Yeah, or they just especially know when they get an arrow in their head. Yeah, the only reason you would want to go here is so that you don't have to try to like get around your buddies. But uh, they know you're there. Okay, then never mind. As long as an air awakened is up, the enemy knows where you are. Now, if you guys take him out... They no longer have that empathic ability, so you could try to hide. But the other guy is the high damage one, so you know you gotta weigh your you gotta weigh your options here. Okay, so okay. what I'm gonna attempt to do is peek around and hit this guy right here. Okay, with your bow, I assume. With my wrist bow first. Okay, go for it. Holy Ooh. crap. <laughs> awesome. um, that is a crit. So okay. you can do different things with crits. You want me to read off what you can do? Um, yeah, I, I don't remember. Yeah, one of them is you just add one extra damage to the shot. Okay. Um, let me go back to the information here. Um, dang it, it's backwards. When I scroll out on the thing, it goes whatever. Okay, so... Attacking, damage. Alright, I can't find it. I just know that one of them is you uh, give an extra point to the next guy in line, to his roll. Um, the other is you bypass their armor and just do direct damage. And the third one is you just add one damage to your roll. Um, let's see... What if I wanted to bypass the armor and shoot him in the knee, kneecap? Um, I would, well, it's too late because you've already rolled, but if you do want to okay. like go for a specific body part, I would raise the difficulty normally. So you okay. can just choose how your crit hits him. Does it bypass I armor? I bypass. Okay. You sure? Is that what you want? Yes. Okay, well, that was a waste because he has no armor. He's an awakened guy. He's basically walking around in robes. <laughs> okay. Um, so you bypassed his non-existent armor, and your bolt plants itself right into his shoulder, uh, just flies over the head of the person that uh, he was guarding there, hits mm -hmm. him in the shoulder, and he grunts. Ugh! He's still up. Mm -hmm. And um, for my last action, I want to throwing star, same guy. Okay, go ahead and roll. Nine to hit. That is a successful hit. That was almost a critical hit. Your mm -hmm. throwing star sails through the air 
and again hits him. It actually catches on his lower thigh. He is not crippled, but he is unhappy. Ugh! And he is very angry. His eyes begin to glow red with hatred. <laughs> All right. So up next is going to be uh, uh, Theo. Okay. Um, Theo, you will have to move as part of your of your yes. Team. One, two, three. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll go. Maybe maybe one more. Yeah, so that your buddy can get okay. up to. Yep. All right. What would cool. you like to attack with? And I would like to use my pistol. Okay, and that's uh, three damage on hit. Okay, go ahead and roll. You gotta hit a nine. He's technically not near, but that's just by like an inch. That's a, that's oh, a that is a beautiful crit. Holy crap, that's almost a perfect roll. All right, so that is a crit. So not only do you do your, what is it, two da three damage? Holy crap. Um, you get to choose what you want to do with the additional one. Now, you already know he doesn't have armor. So you can either add damage to him, or you can add a modifier to um, Fenric's next roll. Oh, um, I guess I'll do extra damage. Okay, so that's four damage. Um, let's see, four damage. Oh man! All right, so this, uh, so your shot just plants itself right in his sternum. It's a miracle it actually didn't hit nice. his heart. Uh, he is not dead, but he he's basically immobilized. He is so in. Oh, that's the other crit is immobilization. But in, anyway, oh, okay. um, we'll we'll do that next time. So uh, he is still up. He is hunched over, but man, is he angry! <laughs> you better hope you kill this guy on the next roll. All right, um, you move though, so that was your other move. So up next is Fenric. Fenric, you want to go there? But if I move, I can't shoot, right? Uh, you, can? you can't shoot your musket, Wait, no. Oh, damn it. Mm -hmm. But your crossbow is a light weapon, so you can just say that you started the oh, battle yeah. with a crossbow. Uh, yeah. You gonna do yeah. it? Yeah, I'm moving. Alright, so you're moving in, and you whip out the old crossbow. No sniping today for you. No, Alright. Go ahead and roll against a nine. That is a successful hit. Not a crit, but that is a successful hit. Crossbow is a pretty effective weapon. However, that's a two damage hit. Um, your crossbow bolt hits exactly, exactly where Theo had just hit with his rifle. And it drove the bullet into the man's heart. The man just absolutely gets laid out on his back. Ooh. Okay, let's, uh, yeah, we'll flip him. Here we go. All yeah. right. That, that's good enough. He is <laughs> down. Okay, your turn Head is first. over. The air awakened is coming after you. May God have mercy on your souls. Um, the air awakened is going to go after Fenric. Because Fenric is the most open at the moment. Uh, let's see. He's. I just got to read up on their abilities here. Oh, fun! How fun! Okay, so... Uh, I'm just making sure I do this right. He automatically okay. dies. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so uh, he is going to... Actually, it's a she. Uh, she is going to um, use an ability called Gust, which creates a mighty gust of air in a 15-foot cone that knocks over anyone if they fail a daunting fortitude check. So... First move, she's going to go one, two, three, so that she's within range, more or less. And she is going to do her gust on all three of you guys and attempt to knock you back. If she knocks you back, you lose a turn recovering. So what you're going to do is you're going to roll fortitude against a daunting difficulty, which I believe is 11. So starting with Dale, uh, what's your fortitude? Negative one. <laughs> Okay, I, so... Uh, I get a bonus for being mostly obscured? Uh, no, unfortunately you don't oh. in this case, because this gust is in a cone, and it, it's going to blast all of you due to the pressure. Okay, so what am I rolling? Uh, you're rolling a fortitude check against a 11, I believe. Uh, so, I've got to get a 12? You've got to hit a 12. Okay. Otherwise you get blown backwards. You don't take damage, you just get knocked down. Um, uh... Unfortunately, it... Fails, so you get blasted back, 
and that's you. And I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, you're just doing, you're trying to impress her with your upside down skills. All right, so up next is going to be Fenric. Go ahead and roll your fortitude, which is what? Minus one. Oh, you guys are a bunch of skinny boys. All right. <laughs> okay, roll your, so you need to hit a 12. It's not the size that counts. In this case, it is very much the size that counts. All right, so Fenric did succeed. Just a 12. Fenric plants his foot in the ground and does some really cool superhero knockback thing where she blasts you back and you just, your feet just grind in the sand, but you stay standing. You you look extremely cool in this moment. All right, up next is Theo. Let's see if you stay standing. You have fortitude plus one. Theo is the beefiest among you. <clears throat> so you need to hit a 11. Oh, nope. that's a fail. Uh, All right, so despite the fact that Theo is a little bit thicker than you boys... Um, Theo gets knocked back as well. So, uh, we're on a new turn, and Fenric automatically gets to go first on this one, because he is still standing. Um, Fenric, what would you like to do? Uh, change out to my musket, and I know it's going to take a bit, so... That is your turn, is switching to your yeah. musket. All right, and if you survive oh. to the next turn, you'll be very devastating. All Are right, talking so action or turn for getting up? Uh, your entire turn is getting up. Oh, so bummer. you guys can both spend your turns getting up. You're up now. What if, what if I want to shoot from prone? <laughs> <laughs> shoot from on your head? Trick shot. Um, yeah. I I'll let you do it. If you want to shoot from laying on the ground, uh, it's I'll just be a add, throwing star. I'll just add plus two to the difficulty throw. Okay. So you need to hit an 11. All right. But you and won't be getting a... up this turn. Yeah, throwing star. Uh, wow <laughs> not only did you fail you critically failed that throw so uh so you you I, throw I the throwing guy. star and and it actually yeah, it. ricochets off this wall right here and hits <laughs> fenric so fenric is going to take one damage so fenric Wait just a minute. what if it hits me because I, I failed really miserably you but, failed yeah. your team not just yourself Oh. So uh, oh, it, it hits Fenric. Fenric takes one damage. Uh, however, he has armor, I believe, so yeah. uh, it doesn't do anything. It just bounces off, and he <laughs> sort of gives you this look like, really, dude? Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Air Awakened is next. Um, she is going to use Chain Lightning, oh. which ignores armor and deals three damage to up to four targets. Ooh. Awakened are freaking cool, you guys. Like, they're really cool. All right, so uh, she's going to chain lightning the whole group, of course. Um, and you if cannot prone, dodge you that. Uh, yeah, you're going to be grounded as the electricity passes through your heart and hits the ground. <laughs> um, okay, so holy crap. Okay, so this attack ignores armor. It does not miss. She's just got to roll a nine or better, oh. and, and she hits you. Oh, whoops, I did that wrong. Yeah. That, oh, that's a crit! Oh, snap! Okay, so she uses chain lightning, and it is epic, man. There is lightning bouncing off of everything as the air fills with an acnic smell of ozone, and, and the air just burns away, and so does your skin and hair as well. Um, each of you takes four damage. She chooses to uh, add plus one damage as her crit. So each of you takes four damage. Um, your, your armor does not count against lightning attacks so let's see we've got uh wow um fenric is hurting fenric's hurting bad right now mm -hmm. um not as bad as not as bad for theo that's good you and then my uh, stats on there uh he put it on himself you guys can put it on your own yeah. cards if you'd like but um essentially you're all fine except for fenric is really hurting man that fried him it turns out fenric is made of a ferrous metal so um okay it is now your turn um rob you you technically get to go first because you have the highest speed do you want to stand up yet or do you want to try to attack from prone again against a difficult roll um can i reload and shoot my wrist bow <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm not gonna let you reload from a knocked down position. Your it's, your it's throwing prone. stars count because because they're just in, you don't have to reload them. Mm. You should probably just get up. To be honest, 
I'm gonna throw my throwing star again. <laughs> <laughs> I could just see it like you're on the ground on your back and you're just going, ah you're just throwing throwing stars like randomly without looking. <laughs> Like the guy shooting the gun down the hallway while he's hiding against the wall, you know? All right, so go ahead and roll against a 12. And that was another fail. Uh, at least this wasn't a major fail, so at least this time the throwing star went the right direction. Sailed over the hit? guy's head. It did not hit did the... Hit this guy? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a good way to fail the mission. No, it sailed over the guy's head and just went off and clinked it, against some limestone it, somewhere. It hit the corpse. Yeah, there you go. It, it added damage to the corpse. Okay, so up next is uh, Theo. Yeah, Theo, you're next. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I want to reload my gun. Okay, that is um, that's a light. Uh, the reload is one thing. You could do one of the one of the thing. Do you want to move? Um. Uh, no, I just want to fire. Okay. Fire my handgun. Yep, so go ahead and fire against a 9. Nice, roll. 9, 10, 11, 12. It's not quite a crit, but you were close. All right, so you fire the gun, and it successfully hits this guy. It hits him just below his hand. Uh, too bad you didn't hit his hand because that's where their power comes out of. Um, so you do 3 damage on the target. This is an air awakened, right? Um, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, he's not dead, but uh, that definitely hurt him, and he is not happy. Or she. I keep saying he. Okay, so up next is Fenric. Oh, they're not happy. I'm angry now. <laughs> I'm going to shoot him with my musket. Oh, shoot! Uh, do you have that equipped? Yeah. I, he I equipped it last, last turn. turn. Okay, nice. Uh, okay, so you raise the musket and fire. Let's see if you can hit that nine. It's a 15. That is oh, a crit. Wow. That is a critical shot. So your musket absolutely fires and absolutely... It ignores one armor, although she doesn't have any anyway. Okay, so what do you want to do with your crit? Do you want to do one extra damage? Do you want to give you the advantage? To... Immobilizing, right? Or... Uh, you can immobilize that... her too, yes. Yeah, so she won't what be able to move. What does that mean? That just means she's she's rooted for one turn. But she's in range already. Keep in yeah. mind. Yeah, mobilizing her won't do much. She's not a melee person. Yeah, I just do one extra damage there. All right, cool. So you're gonna do one extra damage, um, which brings it to a total of five, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Mm. Ignores one armor as well. Um, well, she has none. So that's that's five damage, and she's already taken one, right? So that's six. Or she take she took two. So she's taken yeah. seven damage total. Okay, so she uh, she screeches, Aah! but she doesn't die. She stays standing, and her eyes are sparking. But man, she is bleeding out quick. Your your shot basically nailed her um, in one of her arteries in the same arm that uh, your buddy hit her in. So she is bleeding out really quick right now. And uh, desperate times call for a desperate measure. She's gonna do something crazy. Um, okay, so she is going to again do chain lightning. She's going to attempt to fry the rest of you guys to death. Um, this is a, a to hit of nine, so she has to hit a nine to hit you guys. And it's a single roll, so if she fails on the first roll, she fails to hit any of you. It'll just look really cool. And oh, she barely hits the nine! Oh, bummer. Okay, so each of you takes four additional damage. I believe uh, Fenric is unconscious now. Yeah. He, he has been uh, turned into burnt popcorn at this point. <laughs> um, and Cam, wait, eight health? Oh, that was where you were at after the damage. Okay. Yeah. So you're at four. Yes, I'm at four. Yeah. So yeah. you're at six, right, Rob? Or five? No, because remember, it was. I think you said it was four damage before. I didn't count it as four damage. My oh, math okay. was off. That's cool. All right, so, oh, man, both Theo and Dale are really in a lot of pain. And Fenric... Just holding more, on. Fenric more or less just looks like a pile of ash. Let's hope that he survives this encounter. <laughs> um, Rob, you're still oh, upside wait, down. <laughs> I'm, no, 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 that's my turn. Okay, you're finally getting up. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, 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 not not him. Oh, because Fenric's out. I got you. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Fenric, it is up to you, buddy. You're the only one who can attack this turn. 
You mean Theo? Or Theo, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, yeah, cool. Fenrix. Uh, yeah, Fenrix uh, out. I'll reload and I'll attack with my uh, pistol. Okay. You gotta hit a nine. Oh, success! Oh, okay. nice. You fire your pistol, and it really doesn't matter where you would have hit her. She was already more or less falling down, and your shot, just so you know, actually hits her directly between the eyes, and her head no longer is attached to her shoulders. <laughs> she is out. Okay, so you guys have successfully dispatched both Awakened, and you guys got to see how amazing Awakened are, but how easily they go down as well. He's so not, He's not up yet. Well, I Phoenix, uh, at the I end of a... Phoenix down. <laughs> at the end of a combat encounter, um, he he comes back up with one health unless you have a revival kit and you want to try to give him additional health. Oh, okay. I don't have any of those hiding on me. Uh, yeah, I don't think any of you guys did. Not that I know of, no. Okay, cool. No um, okay, so Fenric is up. Um, he is really not feeling good, and he's got a lot of burns. Before anybody does anything, I eat the ration. <laughs> Uh, you really should probably have Fenric eat the ration because I, I scarf it down. You're a horrible person. Anybody can do anything. All right. Well, they'll remember that. Okay. So, um, you What's guys have no more rations. Um, What's my what? What's my health now? Uh, health. Uh, rations give you plus three. Okay. Perfect. You're at eight. All right. So, um, you guys. You, okay. So this is the end of that particular encounter. Um. We're going to find a way to heal you before next week. I just uh, don't know if we're going to fully heal you. I have to look in the rule book. Anyway. Can... Healing potions. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we'll deal with that in just a moment. Mm -hmm. So you come up to the young man who is roped. And um, you now have to decide if it's safe to untie him. Or if uh, you want to just keep him tied up and deliver him tied back to his sister. Uh, if you would like to try and determine if it's safe, that's going to be a wit roll. I've got a better idea. Um, I turn to Benric and I say, maybe we should ask him if the, he's the actual guy we're looking for. <laughs> yeah. Because this could just be some random prisoner. Yeah, what was the like description that the sister gave us? Like, does it match this person uh the description so so she is uh very dark skinned um she looks like she is somewhere from um probably the mountains uh he he is also dark skinned not as dark as she is but to determine anything more you guys are going to have to roll to figure this out there's two ways you can do this you can try to just discern this by just looking at him and and hopefully figuring it out deductively um sherlock holmes style or you can try to question him and determine if he's lying or not. Well, each of you do, can choose what to do. You can figure it out. You can each choose what to do. We figure it out on our own first. At least we get two options. At least that can fail without much consequence. Yes, but each of you only gets to do one of those things. Yeah, so, so oh, okay. that's why I said Fenric might want to be the one that uh, does the, the most lucrative uh, discernment. Yeah, Fenric has a uh, really high wit. So you're probably better off with Fenric questioning him. If you're just trying to figure it out by looking at the guy, that's going to be a calculation roll. Yeah, I'll question him. Uh, anything you guys want to do? Or... Mm. Well, let's, let's see if yours succeeds before we do our thing. Right. Oh, and the, her brother's name was uh, Jabum. Jabum? Oh. Yeah, not that it matters so much, but if you're just curious, like, don't waste your time asking. I guess you can ask his name and see if he answers correctly. Okay. Hmm. Hey, Jacob, I need you to wake up a bit here. That's a fail, by the way. Uh, he, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> He's so scared of your words. He just he just goes into a coma. <laughs> <laughs> no no i'm just kidding all right so uh you you asked him his name and he says my name is jabum but you have no idea if he was lying or not you couldn't quite tell um okay so up next is theo would you like to uh try and use your wit or your calculation um what would calculation do 
Speculation is you're just going to look at him and you're just going to try to discern if this guy is a slave to the prophetess or if he's still free. Um, you, you just remember in the back of your head, oh, there's something unique to people who are slaves to her. I just can't remember what it is. That would be your okay. calculation roll. Uh, I think I'm going to use my wit then. Okay, so you're just going to keep questioning him and try to discern if he's lying. Uh, it's going to yes. be a 11 to hit. Okay. Go ahead and roll. Well, 11, whatever your modifier is. Nope. Nope. No. Uh, it's a 10, right? You had a wit plus one? You ask him if it's raining right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> you ask him, are you a slave of the prophetess or are you a free man? And he... He keeps his head bowed down as if, you know, he's, he's suffered. He's, he's been tortured, basically, and he says, I'm free. No one, no one enslaves my mind, but you aren't sure if he's telling the truth or not. Okay, last but not least is going to be Dale. Dale, okay. would you like to use wit or calculation? They're both the same. So um, you said that the, the person we were dealing with, was, was that a sibling or no? Uh, yes, if this is him, he is a sibling of the girl. Okay. Um, ooh. Uh, ret retcon here, maybe. Uh, did she say if they had any other family members? Um, no. She's just concerned about her brother. You didn't ask her if she has other siblings, because okay. it wasn't a conversation, really. It was, you, you took okay. a flyer off a wall. All right. Um. Hmm. So let's so let's see. I am going to. Here, here we go. I'm gonna look and see if he has a name tag. On. on <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is. And then the... <laughs> I got it at Staples. My teammates just really failed to see that. They they just questioned this guy to no end. You're just like you idiots. He had a name tag the whole time. But no, has, no, that has to be a good roll, though. Uh, you can okay. So you're doing a calculation roll. You want to try to discern if this guy is uh, is who he says he is just by looking at him. So yeah. go ahead and roll uh, against an eleven. Uh, uh, you got it because you have one, plus yep. one calculation. All Easy. right. So as you as you continue to stare at him, you think to yourself. That's right. I remember reading somewhere that people who are enslaved by the prophetess, their eyes are essentially hazel white. They're very light. Mm -hmm. And so you tell him to look you straight in the eyes. Mm -hmm. And he hesitates for a moment. And I want each of you to roll a calculation starting with um, starting with Dale. Uh, this is a really hard roll. This is going to be 13. Okay. Or twelve for you, I, I guess. Oh, so close! Uh, All right. Wait, hang on. That's a that's twelve. Yeah, but you got to hit a thirteen. Oh. Um. I don't think I, there's anything you could do about that. Since, since I was the only one that that actually knew something about this guy, can I get a bonus? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, so uh, Theo, try to hit a thirteen. Uh, uh, plus okay. your calculation, which is nothing. So yeah, thirteen. Zero. Oh man, another ah. close one. Man, you guys are just skating fate here. Yeah. Okay, last but uh, let's do Fenric. You're gonna try to hit a thirteen. You've got plus two, so you've only got to get uh, eleven. Yes. Yay. Okay, Fenric is uh, successful. He he notices that um, even though this guy's eyes are not. Um, well, they're not they're not white they're not white like her her servants tend to be um there's something off about this guy you, he's probably not going to attack you guys if you untie him but he is not in his right mind so you need to decide what to do here yeah he doesn't I think we can keep him keep him topped out or whatever oh, yeah, yeah he's he's bound with his hands behind his back essentially and awakened as long as their hands are tied they can't use their power. They can't, like, shoot lightning bolts out their eyeballs or anything. So you want to keep him tied up for now and take him back bound? Yeah. That's probably yeah. what I'm here. Okay. So that's what your team decides to do. Uh, that's the end of the encounter today. Um, next time we meet, which will hopefully be next Tuesday, 
um, you're gonna you're gonna take the journey back to the town of uh, what was it? Dry Gulch um, with your prisoner in tow, and you're gonna attempt to turn him into his sister and get your reward. Um, and now, as far as the corpses of the two guys that you killed, uh, they don't really have anything of value. Priests don't really care anything, carry anything valuable, so unfortunately, you didn't loot anything. But the, on the bones. <laughs> no, you guys are not cannibals. <laughs> no. Um, it's not Fallout. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you didn't really take anything of value off of them, unfortunately. Uh, but however, when you guys do face like bandits and, and just normal characters, looting is very much a part of the game. So you can loot money and weapons off of them and stuff. Well, so, what about their clothing? Isn't you, that like higher quality stuff? Not really. Than usual? No, oh. they're they're like monks and everything except violence. Like they're nothing okay. like monks when it comes to violence. They're very violent. You could take their clothes if you want, just to say you did, but it won't get you anything. <laughs> just leave two naked awakened bodies in the desert. Well, I mean, they're not gonna use those clothes. <laughs> okay, so that is the end of today's encounter, guys. Next time. We're going to make our way back and see if you can make it with a prisoner. Um, it's going to add some difficulties to your team. However, you guys did all survive. Fenric took a bit of a beating, but he is up. Um, you said you, you do have a potion. Would you like to use that potion before we end? Yes. Okay. So go ahead and I think it's 1d6 plus 1. Um, so there you go. I'll double check while you do that. Um, potion, potion, potion. Here we go. Lesser healing potion heals. Oh, it's just 1d6. So whatever you roll is what it heals. Go ahead and roll the one. Come on, six. Okay, it's two. <laughs> All right, so you have three health. Um, I think that was the only one you had. Yeah. Um, next week during our first encounter, though, you can attempt to forage some medical supplies because you're you have naturalist, right? Yeah, so if you can forage um, some natural medicines, uh, we'll treat it as just a low-level potion. So we'll see if you can find some tomorrow and heal your team up a bit. But that's it for today, guys. Um, thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoyed it. I did. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Sweet, guys. All right, um, we will be meeting next Tuesday at the same time. Um, if anyone has something come up between now and then, just let me know. And we'll just shoot for Thursday instead. But uh, we're we're gonna try.